Welcome back everyone, Pal Ponder on Weather here. In this update, we got a brief summer cooldown on the way, plus taking a look at the extended range and the tropics because things may start getting interesting in the longer term. So let's take a look at the setup going forward. We've got a pretty significant trough for July standards draped across a good part of the Great Lakes as well as the upper Midwest. That brief cooldown is shifting southbound and that's bringing some showers and thunderstorms along with it. It's likely going to be stalling right along these zones across the portions of the southeast. But further to the north, you're going to be experiencing that brief cooldown in much more pleasant light -like temperatures. Out to the west, you're still going to be dominated over that ridge of high pressure with a lot of sinking air and a lot of heat and numerous records are still going to be unfolding across those regions. So going forward, here's the setup. You've got these little vorticities. We had these storms that kind of blew up across portions of Colorado yesterday. A piece of that energy has shifted further south into New Mexico. And along this boundary, traversing across from the northwest down to the east southeast trajectory, we've seen this kind of zonal zonal flow here, you know, pushing this storm track along these got these areas across portions of the southeast. And that's exactly what's going to unfold today. We also have another round of showers and thunderstorms that's gonna be impacting the Northeast as well. So if we take a look at the surface map, we can see from the storm reports from yesterday, we had all that, that hail and the high winds that really kind of originated in and around the Denver area with some of those golf ball size hail reports and that traversed East Southeast into the overnight time frame. In fact, Enid, Oklahoma ended up with an 84 mile per hour wind gust in the wee hours of the morning. And that mesoscale convection system traversed across eastbound through Tulsa. And now it's impacting portions of southern Missouri this afternoon, getting into Arkansas. And you can see where the actual cold front is, as that is slowly, <laughs> I mean, slowly shifting southbound, bringing those much more pleasant light conditions. Uh, back behind it so if we take a look at the storm development for today so that storm threat that was over portions of Denver yesterday has shifted further south into New Mexico and then there's that other piece of energy that came across Oklahoma in the morning hours now that's shifting off into portions of Arkansas back into northern portions of Mississippi into Alabama going into Georgia and then there's that third pocket of energy up here across portions of the northeast again it's these same areas have been getting hit hard with some severe storms but yes more flooding rains on the way for those regions and areas that don't even need any more rainfall if we take a look at the water vapor transport index you can see where the heavier setups are going to be lying across these regions later on this afternoon you've got a lot of water vapor in the atmosphere and that just rings out the moisture and the precipitation and producing those training convective storm complexes and again further to the north across the northeast you are going to be seeing more heavy rain into the later afternoon early evening time frame but i got some exciting news i have partnered up with papa rob's coffee and created my own breakfast blend coffee it actually comes in a bold and a smooth option plus he has 12 different other varieties to choose from from all over the country it is it is online you can order online and it's brewed fresh daily so if you order today it's it's uh, brewed tomorrow and shipped out the next day so if you'd like to try some everybody that has tried it has loved this coffee <laughs> and we, i do have a discount code it's pal 15 so you all you have to do is go to paparobscoffee.com punch in the discount code and possibly order from some for yourself so take a look at the temperatures folks this is one o'clock in the afternoon on july the 24th the first and you can see where that cold front is draped across oklahoma right 76 degrees that is feeling nice across those regions 69 checking in under a rain cooled air across portions of arkansas but you can definitely see back behind it across the upper midwest regions widespread 70s so that's pleasant light can temperatures further to the south obviously where that cold front hasn't made it there yet 99 in dallas and still cranking up the temperatures but eventually to by tomorrow you are going to be experiencing that little brief cool down and it's probably going to be stalling somewhere around portions of central alabama central you know georgia regions across these regions as eventually the cold front will kind of kind of peter itself out but you 
do have a brief cool down for the next two days and for tomorrow but here's the heavier rain setup for today so you got those again you got those convective complexes they're going to be traversing across these areas with these pockets of slight risk for excessive rainfall and there's that cool down coming in on saturday right so you got the cool down for today and that extends into a little bit further south heading into tomorrow you can see right here this is likely where this cold front is probably going to be stalling out somewhere around this zone so if you live north of there you are going to be experiencing that brief cooler air and that's definitely going to be on the way because we got plenty of heat <laughs> coming for you guys for next week no question about it but here's the overall temperatures heading into saturday afternoon as far as high temperatures so yeah just topping out in the 80s in a good part of oklahoma into arkansas por portions of mississippi and alabama definitely pleasant conditions in kentucky across ohio here across portions you know into arkansas so yeah definitely take advantage of this brief cool down because again once this clears out there's definitely a lot of heat coming in for next week and especially by next weekend but there's the setup for Saturday as that cold front will continue to drift further south. So this is likely where it's going to be stalling out somewhere around central central portions of the southeastern areas and further to the south. That's where these isolated showers and thunderstorms are going to be into the heat of the afternoon on Saturday afternoon. And further off to the southwest, I think areas like into Tucson may actually get some monsoonal rains. It's not going to lift as far north as into Phoenix. In fact, I just read Phoenix went, has now been 120 days in a row without a drop of precipitation at the airport there. So they are going through that record breaking heat and they haven't seen a drop of rain in four months. So they definitely need some sort of relief in those areas, but I don't really see anything to come for that region because going into next week there's that trough it's not as it, it slowly starts to eat away right so definitely take advantage of these next two days it's going to be a welcome relief in the in the in the that brief cool down because the heat just comes back with a vengeance next week building across the west and eventually as this will continue to move across the central regions and this heat heat dome will expand northward eating away this any colder colder air aloft and replacing it with a lot of sinking air and a lot of heat because the jet, jet stream lifts well to the north it goes all the way up into canada next week so that allows this ridge to lift further north and eventually get into areas that really haven't been impacted too much with the very intense heat so far this year. But by the middle of next week, I definitely think you are. Like places into Minneapolis might even touch the upper 90s by then. So definitely you know, a lot of heat gonna be building across not just the Western regions, not just the South Southern regions, but across the central states and the Northern states as well. And that continues and will likely gonna be expanding through the Great Lakes into the in, into the Midwest, because you can definitely see where the ridge is by Thursday. Yeah, the most intense stuff is still going to be across the desert Southwest, but eventually headed into Colorado, you may see your first triple digit heat of the year up here across these regions, and that will continue to expand and really encompass a good part of the U.S. heading in the next week. And as that does, and as the ridge continues to expand and deepen. That just shuts off the rain probability. So you do have those storm shots over the next couple of days, but definitely by the middle of next week, the, the ridge of high pressure will be taken over and there's going to be a really hard press to get rain showers out of that at, underneath that high pressure. Because if we look at the extended range from the Climate Prediction Center, it definitely has that as well. So the only even slightly cooler spot in town by then will be far extreme portions of the pacific northwest but for the rest of the country you can see the highest you know above average temperature anomalies are really draped across the middle of the country and areas that have been scathed from the intense heat and you're going to be getting it in a big way starting by the middle of next week but take a look at the tropics let's head out there because things are getting pretty interesting we already been up to the the d name storm dawn and just kind of sitting and spinning out here not going to affect anybody but there's also another formidable tropical wave the national hurricane center now has a 60 percent probability of it becoming 
tropical storm emily over the next seven days so this is going to traverse westbound we've got a lot of time to track this thing and it's probably going to be somewhere near barbados in about a seven day time span but where things get interesting is on the model front because the model front has been fairly bullish on this setup we've got a lot of ocean heat content i showed you the record-breaking you know temperatures across the atlantic very warm waters to work with across these regions and right now the model guidance has it anywhere from a weak tropical storm all the way to a potential cat 2 hurricane just within the next seven days so we definitely have to keep an eye on this and if we take a look at like all the all the members like all the you know all the hurricane models and all the members out there of the model that we have to work with we can see most of them actually has it continue westbound there are some of them that actually take it more of a northwest turn it would actually take it out to sea but if it obviously takes this more westerly trajectory which more guidance is kind of hinting at obviously this would actually enter the caribbean in about a seven day time span and eventually likely probably in going into the western caribbean and things get really interesting here because i definitely extended this on the eps guidance uh, through 15 days so you can see the spread it's a pretty wide spread but again I, like I showed you the northern track if this thing turns northward it would most likely go out to sea but there's also about another half of the members actually keep it further westbound and that western trajectory and if it actually puts it back into the western Caribbean around day seven maybe day nine time frame this actually could try to get its act together because this whole environment is just you know a hotbed of energy ready to be just taken advantage of because this is this whole area has actually not seen a storm so far this season and you've got these well above average if not almost record-breaking sea surface temperature anomalies out here in the gulf of mexico so definitely concerning and some of these mem members actually take it below a 950 millibar hurricane. So you remember Hurricane Allen back in the 1980, which ended the heat wave for Texas. So it's somewhat concerning. I know this is 15 days out, folks, but we got a lot of time to track this. But right now, we've got half the members heading out to sea, and we've got another half of the members heading it into the Caribbean and wanting to put it in the Gulf of Mexico by around 10 or 12 days from now. So it's something we definitely have to be a keeping an eye on heading going going forward so guys i appreciate you guys uh following uh do share this video definitely hit the like button as well as subscribe to my channel and catch the next update why i protect you before and after the storm